Welcome back. There's been a lot of comments asking why I'm saying this will be the most powerful two-stroke ever. As I'm waiting for parts, I thought it might be time to explain things in more detail. Today, the porting might actually just be the exhaust port. Let's see how long this takes. First up, the exhaust port and duct. The exhaust port is kind of simple compared to the transfers. The goal here is to maximize port area and maximize duct velocity and flow through the duct. First, a few constraints you have to work within when designing an exhaust port. Excuse my Yankee whiteboard here, it's uh, makeshift, just for the occasion. So, constraints. <laughs> oh shit. First, width. With a single exhaust port, you can't go too wide before you will snag the piston ring. The old rule of thumb is about 70% of bore width. You can go larger than that in a smaller bore, and you can't go that large in a bigger bore. And also, it really depends on, uh, on the port shape. So a port, a port with, um, with a really flat top edge will be harder on the ring, so you can't make that that wide. Versus a port which is rounded. Won't be that hard on the ring. And also, if you make the port with kind of a flat roof, but rounded edges, that's easier on the ring. So you can go wider with a port like that, versus a port like that. To circumvent this, there's uh, twin ports. And there's uh, triple ports. And there's even quad ports. That's a nice quad port. You want as wide a port as possible, but not wider than 100% of bore. To say this is 100%, you will lose power if you start bringing it back like this. It will disturb the scavenging from the transfer ports. So 100%, that's the maximum. It's a dance between the transfers and the exhaust port. Two, hate. <laughs> Constraint number two. Height. In your pursuit of area, you can only go that high before you start destroying the resonance in the pipe. I'll talk more about resonance in the pipe when we get to the pipe, but now it's about the port. Imagine this being the cylinder, and that's the exhaust port. This is the pipe. Now as the piston travels down and cracks that port open, a pressure wave will start traveling in the pipe. It'll hit the conversion cone and it'll return. And you want that return of that pressure wave to hit when the piston is about to close the port again. To effectively close it earlier than it really does and also push fresh charge which has been pushed into the exhaust duct back into the cylinder and supercharging it in a way. We also want a portion of this wave coming back to hit the piston when the port is closed and then travel down the pipe again. And this remainder of the previous pulse will join forces with the new pulse from the next cycle and strengthen it a little bit. Then that pulse will return and it will hit the piston, bounce back, and then it will strengthen the next pulse and so on and so forth. Resonance. Did you know there's a t-shirt? About 190 degrees exhaust port duration is the optimum for, for this resonance, for the strengthening from the previous pulse of the current pulse. Part because that pulse or wave isn't really strong until the piston has traveled a few degrees past the initial opening of the port. Part because we want that pulse to arrive a little late, to hit the piston and bounce back. Part of it to hit the piston and bounce back. You should make the port higher than 190 degrees duration though. I'll get to that later. Another constraint is it can't be too close to the transfers or you will get a lot of short circuiting. Fresh charge from the transfers, just short circuiting and going straight for the exhaust instead of filling the cylinder. This means if this is the exhaust port, you really can't have transfers too close like this. There needs to be a gap here. 
The smaller that gap, the more short circuiting there will be. So, to my exhaust port. The first thing you'll notice is that it's definitely breaking that rule of not wider than 70% of bore for a single exhaust port. Mine is actually 100% of bore. Half the cylinder is gone. Why is simple. More area. And why no bridges? Simple. Bridges reduce area. Bridges cause turbulence behind them. And there's a skin friction. So they reduce flow. So no bridges, more area, less turbulence, less friction, more flow. How I'm able to break this rule is with this special custom piston and retained ring combo. More on that later. The reason for this extreme bore width is to maximize blowdown time area. So blowdown area is the area above the transfer ports. So you might notice that my port has a raised exhaust floor. Just below the transfer roofs, it's the blowdown area that's important. The rest of the port is not important. Blowdown area, that's important. The part that opens before the transfers open. That's when the exhaust port has a chance to empty the cylinder of spent gases before fresh charge is introduced. This raised exhaust floor serves a dual purpose. First, it reduces volume of the duct and increases velocity in the blowdown phase. But also, it reduces short circuiting because there's no port close to the transfers here. It is here though, but not here. And this step above the piston makes so that fresh charge doesn't really want to jump, jump into the port, so to speak. Exhaust duration is 198 degrees. But there's a bevel on the top edge, bringing it closer to 204 degrees, effectively, with that chamfer. The exhaust port top edge is relatively flat, there's just a slight radius to it, but there's this large bevel. This bevel serves two purposes. It helps the ring survive, making it easier for it to be pushed back in into the bore when it, it's past the port. And also, it increases flow when the port opens, because there's a not so steep transition. transition. The reason I'm running a port with higher duration than what would have been best for resonance as long as the loss in torque is less than what you gain back from rpm you'll increase power the duct the duct is shaped to keep velocity high and increase flow three features Three important features. Bulges. Spent gases in the cylinder don't just intuitively want to head for the exhaust, which sits here. They just want to get out. And that's straight out, radially straight out. Cut a 100% of bore exhaust port in a pipe and flow some water through it and see where the water goes. It won't just go straight out in one direction, it wants to go in all directions out of that hole. These bulges are there to gently persuade the gases to travel towards the exhaust versus something like this which might make them upset and have them spend more energy on the way out. Two, the duct exit is smaller than the effective area of the actual port, about 75% smaller, thanks Wobbly. This again is to keep velocity high during the blowdown phase. About 0.8 Mach is the golden number at the exit here. That's 0.8 of when flow goes sonic. Or is it supersonic? I think it's called sonic. 0.3 The very high exhaust floor. And this too promotes flow, low volume in the duct, and keeps velocity high during the blowdown phase, which is the phase before the transfers open. Between the exhaust duct and the actual pipe, there is a short transition piece. This 
which brings the diameter of the port exit out to the diameter of the header, which is 100% of the effective area of the exhaust port. This is a short transition. Here's the duct and here's the pipe. And it's short. It's bringing the shape and the size of that duct exit out to the round exhaust shape and uh, area. It's easy to think that a longer transition would be better, something like this. But a flow wouldn't detach from the edges. That doesn't really matter here. There's more than enough room in that pipe for, for, for the spent gases to get away. What we want is a sharp transition from high velocity, low pressure to low velocity, high pressure. Because here we want those pressure waves. Here we just want those spent gases to get out as quickly as possible. Okay, I think that's enough for today. I'm hoping this cleared up some confusion. I always feel after making a video like this that I made more confusion than before. But, um, but yeah, so let me know what you think. And uh, next time, if you like this kind of format, next time the transfers. And then the pipe and the case and the intake and everything. The head. Okay, thanks for watching.